I've been really wanting Wizards of the Coast to release something in Thay. And given that they're tied to the Sword Coast, I doubt that they will. Fortunately for us, uh, Alex Kramer and Ed Greenwood, uh, along with their friend Alan Patrick, came up with a very good Thay supplement if you want to run games in the land of Red Wizards. Hello everybody, Jordan here, the PH Silent, and we're going to talk about a Dungeon Masters Guild PDF slash print-on-demand book that just came out. Um, it is called Thay, Land of the Red Wizards. It is written by uh, Ed Greenwood and Alex Kramer. Specifically, those two I know worked on the Borderlands book that I liked so much, and I'll put a link down below to that video if you're interested in the Borderlands book. Uh, and this is in a very similar style. Lots of lore, lots of really cool information, backgrounds. Uh, this one has a class and also comes with um, a bunch of feats and an adventure. Very fun stuff. And I thought not only would we talk about this, but some other Red Wizard uh, supplements that I know about. And with all of these, I think you could craft a really interesting Red Wizard campaign. So let's dive into the PDF. So first of all, this is a $18 PDF here, um, but you can get it for $40 for a book or for $50, you can get the PDF and a hardcover. Um, this is actually what I bought because I I liked it. I wanted to get the the PDF or the hard book. I like these print on demands book. I got the Porter Kingdoms for the same reason. Um, lots of inspirational material to read and flip through. And if you're a fan of the realms, I think it's worth it. Uh, the quality has been, it's print on demand, but I have been pretty impressed with the Dungeon Masters Guild uh, quality for their print on demand. Um, and then we're gonna look at some other ones that I thought was interesting. The Red Wizard Handbook by R.P. Davis. This is, a, this is an older one. And then we're going really, really old with uh, Dream of the Red Wizards for first edition for Advanced Dungeons and Dragons. Um, and then there is a second edition Spellbound that has some information on it. And those are from TSR. Specifically, we're gonna really focus on Fey, Land of the Red Wizards. If you're interested in any of these, I would encourage you to use the affiliate link down below that uh, if you are gonna purchase anything from the DMs Guild, a little bit comes back my way and helps keep the channel going. So what do we have here? Fey, Land of the Red Wizards. This is a 109 page PDF. You're probably getting 100-ish pages of stuff, but it is a lot of information. Um, just like the Border Kingdoms book, there is a a lot of dense text, which can be kind of intimidating when you buy a book like this, especially if you're used to um, other Wizards of the Coast kind of books. Uh, but I enjoy that because the text is what is giving you the information, I guess. Uh, and art is always wonderful. And they do have some great art in here, specifically of Zastam. Uh, but yeah, so chapter one is about the, uh, oh, this is it. Yeah, this really cool picture. <laughs> I love it. So chapter one, um, and I should say, for those of you who don't know, Thay is located on the uh, far eastern side of the, the Forgotten Realms map, uh, butting up against these sunset mountains. Um, and the Red Wizards are evil because they're run by an evil person uh, and a lich. And so they do a lot of evil mischief within the world. But what I liked about the supplement is it was saying like, you know, not everyone that lives in Thay is an evil person. A lot of them are just trying to have their day-to-day -day lives, but they're living under a, uh, a, a very uh, autocratic, terrible tyrant person that is trying to control most of the of Faerun and is using his uh, Red Wizard army to do that. So um, kind of a cool point that you could be a good hero from Thay. Um, and reading this, it would be really interesting to run an evil campaign. And then it would also be very interesting to run a campaign uh, where you are rebelling against uh, Thay and the Red Wizards. So um, chapter one is the people of Thay. And it talks about a lot of the different uh, cultures of people and the people that live here and Thay and society and stuff like that. Cuisine, a lot of like little things that you, if you're like me, you like to have all of that extra uh, kind of fluffy information so that you get a feel for this place and, and what what's it all about. So um, there's actually like some 
uh, recipes in here, spice cupboards and stuff. Uh, kind of interesting, fun things. Information about the economy, mining, uh, the government. Um, and then this is, the the meat of all of this is the Red Wizards of Thay, I feel, because we're, that's the title of this and we, the most interesting aspect. Um, and it kind of goes into how they are now structured. Uh, because originally there were the eight schools of magic and there were eight red wizards that were known as Zulkirs that each represented one of those uh, one of those schools of magic. So there was a conjuration wizard, there was illusionist wizard, and they all uh, governed together. And that changed when the Zulkir of necromancy, Zastam, um, took over. And so now the hierarchy is Zastam, like Thayan Red Wizard, Almighty King, uh, the eight... Uh, the eight original Zulkirs, or the eight Zulkirs that Zastam has put into place, and then the various Red Wizards that spawn down from them. So they're very keen on keeping themselves in power. And one of the things they're doing is anybody that has, uh, from a very young age, they go out and they identify uh, wiz potential wizards, anyone who has like a magical talent. And then those kids are basically abducted and put through a rigorous training to be a red wizard, but also a brainwashing. You're only fed a certain story. And you're only fed one side so that you will be very loyal to Zastam and the red wizards. And that's reflected later on with some of the rituals that you can learn that you can't do without the blessing of Zastam. So it's he's setting himself up to really be a, a high level antagonist. So I thought that was interesting. Identifying talent is first, and then um, once they identify talent, they'll take that person and they'll go through magical training and some non magical training. Uh, and then chapter two, we get into ruling Thay and the different parts of Thay, um, and a, a little bit of the history of Thay and stuff uh, with all of the current, and I say current, but like pretty much all of the stuff that happened uh, after, I guess, fourth edition, um, and in the novels where Zastam kind of came to power and now he's he's really ruling. So Ed Greenwood and Alex, they've expanded upon that, which is really fun. And I like this art. Um, we get into the Zulkirs of Thay, and so you have Zastam at the top, and then it talks about all of the different ones. Uh, so you have some NPCs, no stat blocks, but I feel like you could translate these to um, the Transmutation Wizard stat block in the Monster Manual, um, or in Mordenkainen's Tome of Foes, whatever the whatever the newest one is cool. Um, Thayan Military and the Thayan Knights. There's like a whole bunch of undead knights that uh, work for Zastam, which is kind of fun. And then if you have the PDF, I really like these insignias. You could totally uh, copy these and print them out, which would be kind of fun to have if you were playing a game where you're all part of a certain uh, Thayan like rank insignia and that you're, I don't know, I thought that would be kind of fun. And then points of interest are, if you're going to Thay, here are some interesting spots to go. It's not a total gazetteer, but just uh, a, a general, the different cities within and and kind of kind of how they interact with Thay as a whole um, and how they interact with the Red Wizards. Um, really cool painting here of some, well, I'm assuming dragons flying around, but just like two Red Wizards walking up to a big old tower. And then... Chapter four has some information on, uh, well, this is the character options that you can have. So um, this comes with like background and, and new equipment that you can use, um, some feats. So there's a, uh, this is a paladin. It's called the Weave Bound Paladin. It feels very Ed Greenwood to me, where you're uh, a paladin, but you're worshiping Mistra of all people, which doesn't totally tie in to what I thought the Red Wizards were about. But I like the idea of an arcane paladin. Uh, this is getting a little, not controversy, but like if you look at the comments of the DMs Guild um, purchase area, there are some people that are, that are saying this isn't, this doesn't fit with 5e design. And I agree with that because it says you have to have an intelligence score of 12 or higher to take this. And you also have to have two level, levels of wizard before you are allowed to become this paladin. Uh, and that does go against um, design principles for 5e, not necessarily earlier, 
Uh, but I like it because if you're practicing to be a wizard, but it's like, well, you're not actually going to, uh, you're not good enough, but we're going to make you this, this, um, I don't know, weave bound paladin and you're going to serve Zastam in that way. So I kind of like that idea. Uh, but I will say even the creators in those comments, if you read them say, you guys don't, you don't have to do that. Like you don't, you don't have to meet the minimum requirements if you want to, like nobody's telling you to. So you could just start as a weave bound paladin. Um, it's kind of interesting. You learn some new spells, you get your oath spells. Um, Channel divinity gives you arcane armor. Uh, then you have Weaver's Mantle at 7th level, where you manifest an aura. Uh, choose a school of magic and a creature to receive your mantle. You must be able to perceive this creature. Uh, when a creature wearing your mantle is targeted by or would be affected by a spell from that school, they must choose one of the following effects. Um, and so there's like an increased effect or a delayed effect and things like that. Kind of interesting. Or give you resistance. Now, there's a new magic auto option called Circle Magic, and Circle Magic is something that has been in Thay from uh, way back in the, the first edition era. And it's the idea of, you, we have this council of mages, so why don't we have um, this circle of mages? They're in a circle. Can they collectively cast a spell? And so that's what this is talking about. And the idea is there, but it doesn't really work out as like a character option to me. But again, I think you could take what they're trying to do and uh, deflavor it from the Red Wizards and use it in a different way. Because at a core, it's like, it's kind of cool. So it says you need to be a circle caster, which is like taking a feat to be a circle caster. And you can take, once you have the circle caster feat, you can also work with uh, other people that have the circle caster feet to then collectively cast a spell. And the idea is, is that one of you is going to be in the center of a uh, circle of mages, um, or maybe not in the center, but you're the, you're the focal point. And all the other mages are pushing their energy towards you. And then you cast a spell um, using the highest level slot you have available. And the spell will uh, go off but it will also, you're gaining spell points from all of these other people that are around you. And then you can augment the spell with those spell points, kind of like how sorcerers have meta magic, but um, extrapolated and it can also be detrimental to the people that you're pulling um, spell energy from. Not necessarily something that you would use in... Uh, a fight as it is part of like a ritual. So you, it does take 10 minutes to cast this. So you could upscale a fireball, but like it's going to take you 10 minutes to cast that fireball and you, you could make it very, very powerful, but you're not going to, uh, you're probably not going to use that in combat. So it gives you a lot of information on this. It's very detailed to the point where in order to do this, you need to, uh, you have to cast for 10 minutes. Uh, you have to open your brain to have telepathic, telepathic communication with Zastam. You also have to have Zastam's blessing or you can't do this. And so those those are the things that I'm like, I kind of want to get rid of those because I don't, I don't, I like the idea that if we collectively want to do this, and I would even say um, if you're both wizards and you have this feat, you took this feat, um, or you're both wizards and you know the same spell, you could like channel the spell together and cast it. Um, maybe without some of the detrimental effects, but those, uh, those bad effects kind of keep it interesting. And it's not, there's a reason that we don't do a lot of like circle ritual casting. So one of those is like uh, the surrounding land is turned and blasted to just lifeless hellscape. Uh, another one is that, uh, the people that you're siphoning energy from, it could backlash and they could take 1d4 points of constitution damage or intelligence damage, which, depending on how you play uh, Dungeons and Dragons, could or could not heal um, over time. So there's there's that. Uh, but some of the some of the effects of circle casting that you can do is an enhanced duration. Um, you can, or in, sorry, enhanced destruction. So you can increase the damage that you're doing or make it so the die is rolling at maximum damage. You can extend the range. Uh, you can get advantage, disadvantage. Uh, 
for every, you can do an extra magic missile, it says. So you can kind of do things, sculpt your spell in a different way, shape your spell. So if it's a cube, you could shape it to a cone or a spray or something like that. Um, and then shred the weave where you just like, it says it kills every red wizard that participated in the circle cast unless they succeed a DC 24 constitution saving throw. But you then create a living spell. And there's no stats for that. And I was kind of sad that there weren't any stats for that because you would have to figure out what the living spell is. Uh, there are some templates that you could use in, uh, ironically, uh, the Eberron book, but not necessarily for uh, this one. So if... If I do have one really big gripe, it's like, I don't know how to make a living spell. I wish you would have helped me in that, um, given me an example or a template. Um, so the circle of duplication, circle of hunger, these are all like the circle feats that you can take. Um, but yeah, the prerequisite again is that uh, you're a red wizard or you have the blessing of Zastam and I just kind of get rid of that. Again, backgrounds. Backgrounds are my favorite part of a lot of these supplements because how do I make my characters fit in that world where you say, here are the backgrounds you can kind of choose from. And it really helps people who aren't necessarily familiar with Thay create a cool or a Thayan type character that fits well in there. So we have um, some of these Thay things. I like the this mage here where you're a, a, a student of evil. Um, kind of a fun idea. A Thayan deserter which would be really interesting. Um, a bunch of names that you can do. Here's some Thane equipment, which they're just talking about their use of potions and spell scrolls uh, and a really sweet looking dagger. And then trinkets, Thane trinkets. I love it. Um, new creatures. Uh, these are the creatures of Thay. There's nothing super new here. And a lot of this is just like, you're going to see a lot of goblinoids. You're going to see a lot of this. Um, Kius, uh, I Yes, I forget how to pronounce this. I did a whole video on this guy, but he is the worm that walks. Um, and I thought that was interesting that they kind of snuck him in here um, because I could very much see uh, Zastam trying to control or at least directionally throw this uh, otherworldly monster thing at the right moment to the right enemy. So um, I do like the many-hued goat. It's only challenge rating one half, but it's just a really fun picture. Uh, and then the polter goat. Uh, so you don't have a poltergeist, you have a polter goat, which is incorporeal, invisible, and they have a telekinetic like head slam, which is kind of fun. Um, and then intrigue at Eltabar. Eltabar is the capital city of uh, of Thay. So this would be kind of fun to have an, an a intrigue kind of uh, adventure. Um, I skimmed this. I didn't have a chance to read the whole thing because I was busy reading the other book, but I wanted to get this review out. But again, um, adventures are fun. If you run this or you don't run this, it at least gives you a very uh, good sense of what Thayan, what a Thayan adventure would look like. So I, I always think that this is a great thing to put into um, games or supplements like this, I should say. And it even came with maps. So that's really cool. Um, but we got some cool stuff. So that is that is the th the Fey Land of the Red Wizards. Very good book. Uh, eighteen dollars, uh, fifty dollars if you want the hardback, which is uh, what I got, um, plus the PDF. Now this is an older one, but it's a Red Wizard handbook, and this is only forty pages. It's not print on demand, so you're only going to get the uh, PDF copy. Um, but it has a little bit of information on Thay, but more information on uh, how to create characters within Thay. And I thought that was kind of fun. So the religions that are tolerated in Thay more than other places, um, character options. And a lot of these aren't like, they're not amazing, but again, you could use them for ideas uh, to add to magic items. Um, their version of circle magic is that at 10th level, arcane spellcasters can use their reaction to siphon energy to a focal point that would then let somebody cast um, a spell at a higher level, which is kind of interesting. Uh, and then, so yeah, there's a rogue archetype, uh, lots of dealing with spellcasting because arcane magic is just very uh, relevant in, and prevalent in Thean society. And then backgrounds. I like those a lot. Lots of cool backgrounds. Um, 
treasures and say, this is a lot of fun because they're just kind of interesting magic items. Who doesn't want more magic items in their life, especially Thayan ones, um, some rings, some magical rods, magical staffs, tomes, uh, and then wondrous items here. But at the very end, there were some spells. Yeah. So here are some new spells that I think really fit well with creating a Thay creature or a Thay wizard. So if you wanted to try and create a custom class, this could be a lot of fun of incorporating some of these burning blood, charm undead, um, just interesting things like that. Flame dagger. I like a lot of these. So again, this is a lot smaller. It's only 40 pages, uh, but it is only $5. So I think it's, it's kind of worth it. Again, links down below, affiliate link, uh, things like that. So I wanted to go back then to, if you want more information on this, arguably, I think this book has the most up-to-date and awesome information, and it's laid out really well, and you're supporting cool creators. This TSR book from first edition, Dream of the Red Wizards, um, I originally thought this was an adventure, but then I was looking at it, and I'm like, oh, it's not at all. Uh, this is a, well, this is an old uh, 1988 supplement from TSR, but it does have history of Thay, the people, uh, the magic and the religions of Thay. It has a, a lot of information on it. Uh, this is 74 pages. You can't get it printed, but uh, it does have a, a dense amount of information. These are the kind of PDFs that I really dig into when I am uh, making videos. So I wanted to point it out because it does have some more information on the neighboring lands um, like, uh, what is it? Yeah, Aglarond and, and what have you that they're fighting with the Thayan people. So if you are really wanting to run a Thayan uh, adventure, this could be um, very, very helpful. So I would definitely check that out as well. And then finally, the second edition, they came out uh, with another Thayan book called Spellbound. Oh, this was 1995. Okay. So this has a history of Thay, um, Rashman, and Aglarond. So lots of cool information on all of these um, NPCs um, from interesting locations. And then something that I really like is like character kits. Uh, and again, this is second edition, so you can't really translate this one-to-one, uh, -one, but you can get a good idea. I think what I really wanted from all of these was a way to... Uh, have a wizard subclass that is Red Wizard. And I think that would be a lot of fun. But they do have uh, the Red Wizard, and it has some requirements and what have you, special beliefs and things like that, and some hindrances that you would get if you're going to go that route. So reading this, you could really build your own Red Wizard if you kind of wanted to. It would be, uh, and then you'd look just like this guy. It's like this happy bald guy living his best, uh, his best life, being a Red Wizard. So again, we have Thay, Land of the Red Wizards. You're looking at $18 PDF, $5 for the Red Wizard Handbook, uh, $5 for Dreams of the Red Wizard, or you can get that in soft cover for $10.50. Um, and Spellbound is $10. So a really good Thay Red Wizard bundle if you are looking for more information on all of that and to craft a really cool Thay encounter. Like, a, it'd be really fun. So whether or not you're going to use these for creating the ultimate villain uh, or you just want to stock up on your Zastam information before you run Dead and Thay or other such adventures, uh, I would encourage you guys to check them out. Uh, let me know if you bought any of these. Um, and I know that the creators of the Land of the Red Wizards were saying on Twitter that they, they've sold quite a few, but not a lot of people have been giving them reviews. So if you do buy it and you do like it, consider leaving a review on DMs Guild. I'm going to go leave a review. I really like it. I think it's awesome. And I can't wait for my hardback book to come in the mail because it's really cool to sit down on my couch with my awesome print-on-demand book and read about Red Wizards. If you like these, I have other DMs Guild recommendations that you could check out, other videos specifically to the Forgotten Realms. Some of them are Eberron and things like that, but I only review things that I really like. So keep that in mind that uh, if you see a video on it, it's probably got my, my thumbs up approval. Uh, so yeah, you can check those out somewhere on the screen. I'm sure there's like a playlist. Uh, otherwise, I, I hope that you'll enjoy this video. And thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you all in the next one.